Sometimes your health comes down to the simple numbers, and I'm here with gastroenterologist Dr. Rodriguez. We're going to discuss how your pH number could be responsible for pain, and of course, pH refers to the acidity in your body, right? Absolutely. It's so, a measure of acid. So right. pH of your esophagus, how, how does that affect my well, health? Well, let's start off by saying that your stomach is what makes acid. So acid needs to stay in the stomach or go down the intestine. If it comes up to the esophagus, it's not a good thing. So gastroesophageal reflux diseases, when that acid or those acid contents of your stomach go up into your esophagus, we have an animation exactly. here. which is beautiful. Think of your stomach as a volcano, and the lava, which is the acid, has to stay in the stomach. When it comes up, like a volcano burst, that's bad, that's reflux. So normally, this right here, you should have a lower esophageal sphincter that will stop the contents from going back up into the esophagus, but sometimes? Sometimes you don't. Sometimes some people are born with hiatal hernias where that sphincter is too open, and sometimes we eat so much that the actual contents of the stomach open up the sphincter. That's why we get heartburn. So you have a cool way very cool. To measure pH. Correct. This is very high tech. And what it is is actually a little machine that we suck into. We suck it into the esophagus. And it stays there for two days. And it measures the pH 24-7. So this is literally in the esophagus. Correct. And in that surgery, it, it becomes attached. It becomes attached just by suction. So it's like a suction cup. Two days later, it'll just... And this is an animation of, of that device, right? Yeah, so you may wonder what happens after it desuctions. It just goes down the intestines and out into the ocean, so we don't have to retrieve it. <laughs> but in the meantime, it's sending all this information to a little transmitter that you have right here on your belt. So let's talk about the readings here. All right. This is a reading of what's happening 24-7. In the meantime, you're also writing down what is happening during those two days. Here is the normal pH. At four, notice these spikes. Those are the bursts. Those are the volcano bursts of acid coming up. Acid in the stomach, the pH goes down. So reflux, 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 boom, boom, boom. So it's interesting because I want everyone to understand, when your pH goes down, that means the levels of acid in your esophagus are up. So right. here, 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 all these spots, you have a massive increase in the acid level, exactly. and you should never go below a pH of 4, right? Never. Once you go below a pH of 4, what happens is that acid that's not supposed to be here actually starts burning the esophagus. It can cause esophagitis, can cause precancerous states. Not a good thing, so it needs to be stopped in order to stay healthy. And that's why these tools to diagnose it are so important. Now, let's talk. If you're suffering from gastroesophageal reflux disease, it needs to be treated. And Correct. we all know there are a lot of treatments out there, many of them over the counter. Very, very much so, and pluses and minuses, they work. The problem, as far as I see it, is that we overtake and we overprescribe those medications. So what happens? You take them all the time, and if you read the label on all of these medications, you're supposed to take them only for four to six weeks every day, at max. But we do it every single day, sometimes for years. These have now become over-the-counter medicines, these so-called proton pump inhibitors. Correct. We used to prescribe them quite a bit, but now you can just go into your local pharmacy. And buy them. Buy them, take them each and every day, and you think you're fine. But, but tell people why taking these for more than four weeks could be deleterious well, to your health. Two main chemicals that we consume need acid in order to be changed so that your body can absorb them. Calcium and iron. So if you don't take if you don't have enough acid, you're not going to be absorbing iron and you're not going to be absorbing calcium. So you're predisposed to osteoporosis and anemia. So we take this so often that when you go to a doctor's office, you may not even tell them you're on these medications because you bought it at the corner drugstore. So acid in the stomach, good. Acid in the esophagus, bad. bad. If you're suffering from these symptoms, you need to talk with your doctor because Absolutely. number one, you need to get diagnosed. But number two, Pills may be a temporary answer, but if right. you're suffering long-term, a lot of other procedures Correct. are available. Correct. You know, pills are not the way to go forever. And, and if you're suffering from reflux disease, cutting down on caffeine, Correct. alcohol, big fatty meals. Losing and being big fatty, losing weight. Listen, this caused me to lose 30 pounds because you have to walk the talk. You can't be really heavy because it pushes your stomach up. Exactly. It's simple, simple, simple physics. Well, thank you, sir, so hey, very my much pleasure. for helping us out today.